and uh, let's go for it. Here are my disclosures. And what I thought we could do is a top 10 approach to infection control in the primary care setting. So number one has to be, no surprise, wash your hands. Okay, here's a beautiful print of what you have in your hands. Might be beautiful, but you don't want to share it with your patient. Now, it turns out, no surprise, that we gather organisms from our environment continually. This is an analysis of the organisms picked up from uh, 56 patient encounters. These are standardized examinations, and they had the clinician wear do hand hygiene and then wear sterile gloves. So you could see what was actually inquired just from that specific encounter alone. And you can see a glorious MSSA, MRSA, Enterococcus, Enterobacteriales, ESBL, Acinetobacter, you name it. If it's nasty, it's there. And of course, you can pass it on to your patient. And we know that there is a clear association between hand hygiene and infections. Now, you might have thought this was established hundreds of years ago by Semmelweis. Turns out there's even more sophisticated data now demonstrating this association. Here's an analysis of hand hygiene rates using an electronic monitoring system in the days before versus outbreaks. And you can see that the outbreak units over here are shown in red. Control units are shown in gray. And you can see that before the outbreak, the outbreak units had poorer hand hygiene. And of course, when they learned about the outbreak, they got their, their acting gear and, include, and increased their hand hygiene rates up. You'll notice as well that the absolute rate of hand hygiene over here is only a 40%. So we have lots and lots of room to, uh, to improve. Now, if you ask people, why didn't you wash your hands? Here's what people might say. Excessive work schedule, I'm too busy. Lack of awareness, which just sort of stuns me. Are you in medicine or not? Uh, reaction to disinfectants. And the inexcusable lack of readily available hand hygiene facilities, that's something that we can take care of, right? We can make sure that it's alcohol-based hand rub basically everywhere so that nobody ever gives that last excuse. Now, another way is that to try to provide innovative ways to try to get people to do hand hygiene. Here's an innovative approach to, uh, to, to the bathroom to make sure that those men wash their hands. Now, it's important that it's directed at men because if you look and see, this is kind of interesting, this is hand washing in the public restroom of a highway rest stop. And you can see that the women wash their hands 65% of the time, but the men only 35%. So those sorts of innovations around getting men to wash their hands better is good. Um, but in all seriousness, to improve hand hygiene requires more than simply telling people to wash their hands. Um, this is a very interesting analysis over here from a hospital that, put, that demonstrated the necessity of a multimodal program. What they basically found was insufficient to monitor hand hygiene rates alone, you had to, to do more. And so this was engaging healthcare providers to specify the hand hygiene dispenser locations. So you take away that excuse of it's not available to me. You tell me where you want the hand hygiene dispenser and we'll make sure it's there. Educate people about the electronic monitoring and share the baseline rates so people know how low we are and how much room we have to improve. Give constant feedback to managers and to staff on their hand hygiene performance. Create visual reminders all over the place and create a safety climate where we prize these sorts of interventions. And here's just an example of some of my favorite hand hygiene posters I've seen around. My favorite is the one on the right. The one on the right. What are the top 10 ways to spread germs? You got it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, the another sort of a subtlety around this is if you look at the way that people wash their hands, um, you find that we don't actually necessarily, even if we do wash our hands, do the best job. This is looking at bacterial counts on different parts of the hand after people have done hand hygiene. And what you can see over here is that the most of the bacterial contamination, even despite hand washing, is on the fingertips. The rest of the hand is actually pretty good. Why is that? Oops, sorry. There we go. This is a photograph of me, I'll admit, uh, washing my hands. And you can see that most of our effort is put towards the, the palm of the hand and the fingertips are left out. Now, the paradox, of course, is that your fingertips are what you most often will examine the patient with. And so it's worth being attentive to actually rubbing the fingertips themselves as well as you do your hand hygiene to make sure you get complete coverage. What about the fist bump or the elbow bump? Can that do the magic for you? Here's actually some data on this. It's looking at MRSA transfer rates from a colonized patient to a clinician wearing a sterile glove. And you can see over here that the fist bump is associated with less MRSA transfer compared to the handshake. The elbow bump and fist bump are pretty, pretty equivalent. Maybe the elbow bump is slightly better because you're staying away from the hand. Um, but you know what? Hand hygiene itself can do the magic than any of these. This is a handshake without any hand hygiene. This is hand hygiene than a handshake. And you see that gets you down to a lower level of contamination or transfer compared to the fist bump, the elbow bump, or either. So in other words, you don't have to resort to fancy methods to say hello to your friends. You just need to wash your hands.